All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And yes, as you can see by the thumbnail, uh, there were a couple of pretty big things that happened over the last couple of days that has everybody talking and making everybody believe that behind the scenes something is happening. Now, we are going to get the haters on this video, and that's okay. I don't care. Because if you go back and you look at what happened before Zack Snyder's Justice League got released, there sure was a lot of hate going around saying the Snyder Cut never existed and that we were never going to see it. And a lot of those people had to eat their words. And so I am hoping that because two big players in what we're going to discuss today were involved, that there is something going on behind the scenes. And I will tell you that Warner Brothers is pretty desperate right now. They need money, and they are licensing their stuff out left and right to where they can grab money from. And we're going to look at these photos, and I'm going to talk about what Warner Brothers should do at the end of this video. So let's take a look at what I've grabbed since yesterday. So the first thing here is from David Sweat, and he opens up about his approach to the character and how it differs from past interpretations in a new interview. Now, I'm going to tell you before I read this, this sounds a lot like Man of Steel. Okay. In some previous live action adaptations of Superman, he's been, I don't know if simplified is the right word, but something around there. But there is a complexity to Superman that is very prevalent in the comic books. It's just a matter of bringing it out, which is very tricky to do. He's a complex dude. People think Kryptonite can beat him, but the only thing that can really beat Superman is Superman. His own noggin messing with him. His own moral choices. When you have that to start with, the storytelling can really delve into something rich. That sounds exactly what happened in, in Man of Steel, and people bashed on that. So we're going to see how this movie fares when it does get released. Now, Zack Snyder has been making the rounds on interviews and other things, and in that, I, people should go read that whole Empire magazine, that article. But Zack Snyder was not surprised people reacted to Batman killing in Batman vs. Superman. He said, the only reason I'm not surprised is that some people got brainwashed by a bunch of material that's not consistent with true canon, and that's fine. They're on their own journey. And his characters were. And he had a, an arc that they were going to finish that he never got to finish. And you could see a little bit of that at the end of, of uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League when, when Bruce bought the farm back for Clark and his mom. And... He, they were becoming those good people again. And they'd gotten off the beaten path, uh, especially Batman, because of some of the things that had happened over the years. And Superman is actually what was bringing him back to humanity uh, when originally it was going to be him pulling him away. But we never got to see that full arc because the studio pulled the rug out. Now, I'm showing you this because I thought this was kind of uh, um, ironic, let's put it that way, that Walter Hermata... Uh, live-action R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is in the works from producer Walter Hermata. Uh, so Aaron Levine said at this, so this guy was against Snyder making dark DC films, but it's okay with making an R-rated TMNT movie. Now, some people will tell you that this story is dark, and it is dark, and that's true, and this should be treated with respect. So why couldn't they treat the DC materials with respect and let the filmmakers make their movies? That's the question I would pose to Walter Hamada. He definitely hated Zack Snyder. Now, this comes from Batman Addicts on Facebook. Uh, Brookette Cor uh, Corpse uh, listed this, and a lot of people are getting very uh, nervous about this delay in the Batman 2, and it says, Warner Brothers Discovery's announcement of the delay of Matt Reeves of the Batman 2 to 2026 casts a shadow over the project, revealing a setback in production and a lack of foresight in script development. Robert Pattinson's return as a Cape Crusader seems insufficient compensation for the disapp disappointment of fans early awaiting, eagerly awaiting the sequel, especially given the growing dissatisfaction with the studio handling of its own DC Comics properties. Adding insult to injury, James Gunn's Superman film, an attempt at launching an interconnected DC Comics cinematic universe, only exacerbates concerns about creative direction and management. As frustration mounted, some Battinson fans even took to social media trending fire James Gunn and highlighting the growing discontent within the fan base. Can you guys believe this? Now look at this as a whole. Think about everybody that Warner Brothers has pissed off. Everybody. You have the whole DCEU fans 
that they totally turned their back on starting with the first Shazam movie and then turned everything into a joke. Announcing Henry Cavill was finally back only to pull him away, and now you've pissed off the whole entire fan base that was there for 10 years. Now you got a new fan base that's coming up with the Batman, and now you've pissed off that group of people, and the only thing that seems to be happening is everything that James Gunn wants to do. And so, yeah, people need to be worried, guys. There's nothing positive about what is happening at Warner Brothers right now. The only movie we have coming out this year is The Joker 2, and that could be a big disappointment. The The, the budget was much higher, and they have to sell a lot more tickets, and I don't know if that's going to happen with a musical unless it is amazing. Now, if you, for those who are members of my channel, I did do a trailer reaction on that that is available for the paying members, and the trailer was better than I expected, but I still don't think that's going to bring people into the theater and make them a profit. Now, it's pretty cool. Somebody showed me this on Twitter and said, yeah, they keep making toys for movies that people apparently hated. Uh, and these things keep selling out, guys. Now, this is pretty cool. Now, that was my least favorite Batman costume. I think it's cool in in concept. And it says Hot, to Hot Toys Armored Batman 2.0 is up for pre-order at Sideshow. So we're going to take a look at a couple of the pictures. Here's the first pose. These are some pretty cool things. You know, if I was rich and I had a lot of money to just throw around, I would be picking up these, these uh, figures because these are freaking amazing. And then here's uh, the other one. Yeah, the detail on this and the marks and everything, this is a solid, solid figure. All right, guys, now we get into the meat and potatoes of this particular update. And what's crazy about this, first of all, Zack Snyder was in an interview and somebody asked him about the Snyderverse and if it was going to continue on Netflix and if, you know, how prepared they were. And Zack Snyder said, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. He has not lost interest, guys. He's still interested in finishing his story and wants to do it. There's a whole fan base that wants him to do it, and the studio just has to nod their head. Now, let's look at the other person that was involved in this same sentiment here. Ray Porter, who was Darkseid himself, the voice of Darkseid, came out yesterday and took Twitter by storm and did the hashtag Sell Snyderverse to Netflix. You can see I liked it. I shared it. I reposted it. The man himself, everybody who is involved in this, wants to come back and finish this story. These made waves yesterday. And when you get these big people making comments like this, it makes you wonder if there isn't something happening behind the scenes. And there may be nothing. But from all appearances, it looks like something may be happening. And Warner Brothers is in trouble. Now, here's how they can smooth all of this over. You can make people a lot more excited to go see these films if you appease all the fans. Finish what you started. Give us Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3. Give us the Batfleck film. Let Petty Jenkins make her third final Wonder Woman movie. And a lot of people don't want that to happen. I'm one of those that I actually want to see what they've cooked up. Um, and... Yesterday, there's one more photo, and I don't know. Let me see if I actually have it here. Oh, it is. I think it is in here. So we are going to look at one more photo before. But before I go, that I want to finish up my discussion here about what they, what Warner Brothers should do. If you want to get people like myself and the good graces of Warner Brothers again, you do these things. You get those movies made, and you allow us to get closure after pulling the rug out from underneath us too many times. You've lost lifelong fans. It is a fact. Uh, nobody went to go see those final films because we knew it was going to lead to nothing. I still went and saw them because I had to review them. I'm still upset about the studio lying about Cavill coming back to sell tickets to Black Adam. I do think that is complete fraud, and I do believe that to be false advertising, and I wish somebody would sue Warner Brothers over that. And then you have what they did with these other films, getting everybody all drummed up. When I saw The Flash early, they told us the special effects weren't completed and there were some special things you were going to see in the film. Nothing was different. It was the same film that got released like a month and a half later. So there's a lot of deception going on at Warner Brothers, and they need to start 
putting some more goodwill towards the fans and the people that have been with them since the beginning. Because it sure seems like they're chasing after an audience, like I've said before, that does not exist. All right, now let's look at this last photo. So the last photo I have here is something that James Gunn posted. Day one of season two of, yeah, you guessed it, Peacemaker. And again, we see that he still has the same costume. They're saying this isn't connected to the first film. And I want to note that his costume was ridiculously cheap looking. The whole show was cheap. Uh, It was disgusting humor. It was toilet humor. And what's crazy about this is if you look at the... If you look at the actual emblem for the new Superman film, the Superman logo, it kind of looks like a pizza thing. And I thought I had something for that. Yeah, so there are a couple things here I wanted to show you guys. And these were pretty funny things. We have uh, somebody showing the Zack Snyder's logo for Superman versus James Gunn. And it does. It's like 300 versus Meet the Spartans. That's exactly what it is. It looks cheap. It looks like there's no budget involved. It is as simplistic as you can go. And I've got to see the whole costume. Like, I am really afraid now of what this costume is going to look like. And then you had people making it, saying it looks like a piece of pizza. (laughs) And to me, this also looks like this could be a bike seat. Like, there's, first of all, there's no complete S in there. It's just a mark in the center. And so I've got issues with this logo. I'm, it looked okay when they showed the little glimpse of the suit. But we need to see the suit at this stage. They just need to reveal it at this stage. Now, there's this uh, report going around, and I don't know if this is true, but it says the DCU's Batgirl Extra, who got ran over with a motorcycle, shares that her lawyer is secretly working with Warner Brothers Discovery to sabotage her case. Now, I cannot comment this uh, on this one way or another, but all I would say is this would not surprise me if this is the route they went with the way this studio behaves. All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, what do you guys think about this news about Zack Snyder saying he's ready to go, that they're ready to go, and that Ray Porter is getting involved? Uh, it sounds like there's a little bit of smoke brewing in the background, which could lead to some pretty cool things in the future. So uh, I will continue to guys bring you guys the news, and I'm sorry I got this up late. I, I wanted to have this a couple of days ago, but I am working on taxes, and my I'm just, like, beat from all the stuff I have to do. When you run your own business and taxes don't get taken out and you've got to look for tax deductions and do everything you need to, it's, it's time-consuming, and I appreciate all your guys' patience. We will see you on the next video.